Artificial intelligence, we're often told, is going to be the solution to many of the problems faced in cybersecurity. Machine learning tools will be able to automatically analyze vast amounts of data to help keep us all safe from cyber attacks. But no matter what happens in the foreseeable future, humans are still going to remain a key link in the security chain. And they're often able to spot things that machine learning can't. But what does it take for people to actually be able to do this? And how important is it that the people we're relying on for cybersecurity are diverse? I'm Danny Palmer, this is ZDNet Security Update, and with me to discuss the people tasked with keeping us all safe from cyber criminals is Arno Westilius, Senior Engineering Manager for Cruise and White Hat Hacker for Bug Crowd. Thanks for joining me, Arna. First of all, why is it that AI is so often spoken about as the future of cybersecurity, and why could this not be entirely the case? Well, I would argue that a lot of people got very excited when AI popped up or machine learning popped up as a solution to almost all problems. And I think that at a point in time, we tried to apply this onto too many problems all at once, and it was going to be this good savior for all these different problems. Um, and at the end of the day, I think it's all about identifying and defining the things that we do think that AI can solve for and then move the needle such that the experts that we hire or the hackers uh, that do these manual tasks can focus on the things that are a little bit more uh, advanced or, or more complicated. When it comes to the manual tasks, uh, uh, yeah, what additional benefits does a human uh, bring to that process? Because we often hear how um, artificial intelligence is good at, you know, determining what something is and isn't but there's often blurred lines which uh, that sort of technology can't quite deal with yet. I would say that context is the most important and an understanding of more so the underlying infrastructure and systems and how they relate to one another, how a network works, for example, and how these different systems are interconnected. AI is, or in AI, uh, machine learning is really good at identifying sort of normal or predictive something is outside of the norm. But because all these different applications, these different systems are so different, you essentially have to build a system that is entirely within that context. And so commercial systems, for example, have great difficulty being applied onto, you know, systems that look differently because obviously they are going to behave differently and therefore you don't have a generalized idea what that, what that looks like. And humans are able to look at these ones which uh, we're not certain about and uh, determine what they are and if, if they're harmful or not. Exactly. And I think they have even more context and understanding, right? So there is a world of knowledge and I think testing and understanding, which is something that is really hard to teach a robot to do, but quite easy in people. And I would say, I would argue that most of the hackers I know are of that sort of curious nature. So they have this ability to look at a thing and apply all this different knowledge to figure out what the problem is. Whereas the robot would just struggle a lot with doing the same thing over and over again, or at least making small adjustments until it reaches maybe a similar level of understanding, but it takes a very long time. You mentioned curiosity as a key element there. I mean, yeah, how important is that for the human element of cybersecurity? We often hear stories about how uh, people who ended up working in cyber cybersecurity uh, started by, you know, breaking into their own computer or taking apart toys and things like that. So is a curious mindset an important part of uh I mean, from my personal experience, absolutely. <laughs> I was that child. I broke everything apart to try and understand how it worked. Um, I also do think that there is generally, I think it's a little bit of a bad, uh, hackers get a bad rap for wanting to break things. I think the sort of wanting to break things apart is, an, is a wanting to understand it and wanting to fix it and make it better. Uh, and that curiosity, I think, is hugely important to drive that, right? Like that wants to understand the intricacies of systems, how they connect, and then apply that to solve, you know, larger scale problems. I think the whole, you know, hackers want to break things is, is a little bit of an outdated, um, I guess, prejudice, um, more so than, than anything. I've sometimes had it when I've written articles about the hacking and cybersecurity, you know, hackers in the cyber criminal sense of the word. And use the word hackers uh, to describe what's going on and sometimes people will say that's not the right description or why are you, why are you saying this but I guess that in the realm of cyber security it has become associated with malicious intent where as you've just uh, pointed out you know this isn't always the case and obviously there are people who are hackers 
on the uh, white hat side as well, looking to do the same things as the bad guys are doing, but to help keep people safe rather than do damage. Exactly. And I think that one of the things I think the report talks about this quite extensively as well is uh, that most people who do this do this out of a want to fix problems or a care for the companies that they attack, uh, which for a untrained person or a person unfamiliar with hackers, that might seem a little strange, right? Like you really like this online streaming service. So you go in and you try and break in. Uh, but it always comes from this, this sort of place of wanting to fix things, wanting to make sure that the vulnerabilities that I understand, right, that they are not going to be imposed upon users who, who don't necessarily understand them, right? A lot of the times I can think of, you know, family members who aren't necessarily very computer savvy. Uh, and that what if there is a vulnerability there and they become the target of that? Uh, and so I think a lot of the times it's really about trying to help people. Uh, sometimes it can come across a little little off too, but I think that it's uh, it's it's often from a very from a very good place. So, what do you think it takes for someone to you know be a, a hacker like this? I mean, we've mentioned the curiosity, but is there what other sort of traits are good for you know uh, doing this sort of thing? You mentioned communication there is potentially one. Communication is hugely important and I think sometimes very overlooked. Uh, in my Earlier in my career, I used to hire a lot of people who were straight out of school and they were very excited to come in and they were coming into hack, right? Um, and they forgot that perhaps one of the most important parts is being able to convey your findings and convey your findings in a way that other people understand. Half of this job is translating a complex computer situation to someone who doesn't necessarily understand it. Uh, so report writing might not be people's most exciting like work task, but I do think that it's one of the most important. I mean, it's, been, it's often been the case where you know there's I mean, interesting you know, research that's come out, and it's you know there's a lot of you know very good things in there. But sometimes, yeah, you read these reports uh, and they're written in a very very technical way. I mean, I you know I can, for example, uh, take that information and sort of turn it into an article. Uh, but it could be difficult if, say, for example, uh, you were on your information security team at um, an organization and you presented one of these highly technical reports to your board, they're going to be really confused uh, if you don't explain <laughs> what, what's going on. Exactly. And I think focusing on things like impact, understanding what, what the risk to the business is, right? Like oftentimes implementing security controls can also be an argument with, you know, your growth team, because if you're putting security things in place that might stop your users from being able to do everything that you think that they should be able to do as well. So I think there is a big job of translation there, even though I think it's not entirely the responsibility of the, of the person given the report, but I think that there is a great balance to be had there. One thing about cybersecurity that it's often noted is that uh, it's not the most diverse industry in, in the world. Um, what impact uh, does this have on you know uh, protecting uh, networks and people and what do you think needs to be done to help boost uh, diversity in in this industry it's a great question and a complicated one i think since i started i have seen great change i've been doing this for a little bit over than a decade and uh there used to be almost no other women in security there used to be very few minority groups but I think that that is more a representation of the people that we used to see in offices, the people who used to take on security uh, operations or security jobs within larger organizations were, were, were generally white men uh, because they, had, they already had jobs there. I think that with the growth and the exposure to technology, the way that we see that today, um, we're seeing more and more people finding interest. But I do think that in order for people to get there, they need to see representation. So I think we need to see more, more minorities of, of any kind. I think women are now at a point in this, in this industry, at least, that we have a foothold where we can perhaps help lift others up such that others can see that a reflection of them exists within this context. Uh, but I do really think that online platforms and people's just exposure to technology is also going to help them uh, get there. And I, I, feel, I feel really optimistic when I see the young people that we get in our internship programs and you know the, the people who now go to school to do these things or uh, that just interfaces with us wanting to, to get into the industry. So it really, for me, like it's really important that we get more diverse faces out there so that people feel that you know, I, can, I can be there, I can do that. 
And when it comes to uh, boosting that diversity, uh, you know, we're both talking to each other you know, from our own homes here due to everything that's going on in the world. And over the last six months, uh, you know, everyone's really been forced to you know, work remotely uh, in many ways. And, but it's something that I suppose could help uh, boost uh, diversity in the industry because there are people who may not necessarily be able to you know, go to a Know, an office five days a week but when we're all managing to one extent or another uh, do our jobs from you know, the comfort of our own, own homes that could be something to examine uh, going forward when hopefully things are more more back to normal in in in, in how the world is operating i i 100 percent agree with that and i think uh one of the patterns that we saw prior to the pandemic was security organizations even in large companies that were resistant to work from home policies for example had to be more open because the security talent generally has a tendency to be more spread across uh different parts of the country for example um and i think that given this i think that we have an opportunity to find uh, more diverse talent. They aren't required to live in a big city, which is hugely expensive. I also think that there is a need to look beyond, you know, the big major other corporations, like not just hiring from some of the big ones and also not just hiring from any of the Ivy League schools. I think security specifically, and I'm really excited about this, has really moved away from the requirements of higher level education and degrees. We aren't looking as closely at that. And it's, I think really important from the, for the sake of diversity. If we don't want to hire the same mold of person, then we shouldn't just be looking in the same places, right? And when it comes to people who uh, might be watching this and uh, thinking about getting into this industry, uh, what would be your uh, some of your sort of key tips uh, for them on how to explore uh, moving forward in this space? Oh wow, uh, there are so many things. I think experiment is the biggest one go out there, find all these different tools that are made available to you in your house. You can, you know, download Juice Shop, do like, do all these things that makes you, allows you to practice at home and just test things out, see what excites you. I would also say that um, taking jobs that expose you to as many different systems and environments as possible is hugely important. Like, start that security operations job, learn TCP IP, like figure out networking and systems. Like don't just start with breaking this application. Sure, that also works. But I think that there is just a width to cybersecurity that a lot of people don't necessarily always think of. Um, and I think that it's really important to test all these things out and see, see where you land because there is just so many different things we can do today. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of things going on and a lot that need people to help uh, protect uh, uh, us from them. Um, thank you for joining me on ZDNet Security Update, Anna. It's been very interesting. And uh, for those of you watching, uh, for more um, information and uh, articles on cybersecurity, uh, be sure to uh, keep reading ZDNet. Thank you for watching.